Um, I'm going to tell a story, and it's called, um, what is it called? It's called um, Abraham, uh, Ringo, and Mike. Um, I was about five years old, not yet five years old, when, when my mother and father separated, which left the uh, nuclear family, my mother, my elder brother, my elder sister, and myself. Uh, we were the four that um, blew out birthday cake candles together. And we were the four that decorated the Christmas tree every year together. And we were the four that scrambled around the apartment on weekdays. I think family people know this, looking for a sock and a shoe or a bus pass or whatever was necessary for us to get out the door and off to work in school on time. Um, and that was the family that shared all of our meals around the dining room table. Uh, my favorite meal was Sunday breakfast because it was long and slow. Um, the word brunch had not yet quite made its way across the borders into the Bronx in those years, but and we didn't have um, Bloody Marys or Mimosa cocktails, and who knew from what from Eggs Benedict, who's that anyway? Um, but we had great crumb buns and jelly donuts from the German bakery down the street. We had uh, uh, my mother's 12-inch percolator pot of coffee brewing on the stove, sending that wonderful aroma into the apartment. Uh, and we had time. We had time to sit and talk and just enjoy each other. We always asked my mother, please tell us a story about the olden days. Now, the olden days to qualify families, you know, um, they had to, it had to be before we were born. And she, my mother always obliged us, and she uh, always told the same stories over and over again. <laughs> we never got tired of them. There was the story of the goat and the goat cart that she had as a little girl, and she would hitch the she and her brothers and sisters would hitch the goat up to the goat cart and drive it around the, the uh, garden, which was not far from where I lived as a child, and I couldn't quite imagine that because we weren't even allowed to have a dog. In it. Um, she told us, let's see, of the country cousins who only came into one story. Uh, they, one holiday, they slaughtered, salted, and barreled a pig and uh, sent it down to the city for the city folk. And she remembers the shock she felt when they, uh, when her father pried open the lid and there mm -hmm. on top of this pile of meat was the, the pig's head. <laughs> she told us that at uh, 16 and a half she had to quit high school and go to work to uh, help support the family during the Depression. And uh, that, at that time, she anglicized her name from Elvira Casimiro Cheronella to Vera Carmel to avoid the prejudice that Italian-Americans felt in those years. And she told us about Mike. Mike was my mother's first, well, in those years it was her boyfriend, but as I look back, uh, it was actually her first love and her first true love. It was a frog in my throat. That was her first true love, and I think, looking back at it, her only love. I never met Mike, I never even saw a photograph of him, but he was kind of a special guy. And when my mother spoke about him, she always spoke in his lovely, her face softened and her eyes softened, and she spoke in his little thing. The, the tone of the stories was always, oh, Mike. <laughs> he was always so. He was such a, it was always this little flurry up here, and then a oh, you know. And uh, that's what I remember. More than the content of the stories, I, I remember that so well. Um, uh, let's see, I, I told you I never even saw a picture of him, so everything I have is from just the stories. Uh, Mike flew an airplane. He taught my mother how to fly an airplane in 1937. My mother flew an airplane. That's pretty far out stuff for one. I mean, have you ever flown an airplane? Yeah, yeah 1937. I mean, um, <clears throat> and they, they went to picnics and to horseback riding, and they did things that young people do. And um, my mother was in love with Mike, and Mike was in love with my mother. And he asked her to marry him. Uh, she asked her mother and father, and they said no. Don't get me started, please. <laughs> um, well, uh, I'm going to tell you why they said no. It's not a very difficult problem. Uh, you won't like it, um, you probably won't agree, but you'll understand. Uh, my mother was, I said, Italian, but she was also Roman Catholic, and Mike was a Jew. Um, enough. End of the story, closed case. If you married outside the religion, you lost your family. <laughs> <laughs>
families, very simple. Maybe not every family, but most conservative families. So my mother had to say goodbye to Mike. It's a little tough. Bear with me. Um, she never went into detail about that, but I'm going to look around here and figure that most of you have all that one <sighs> time or another had to say goodbye. Um, no, <laughs> <laughs> I promised myself this wouldn't happen. Anyway, whether it took one meeting or one phone call or five phone calls or five meetings, uh, I don't know, but they break up, they did. The only story she told us was of the last time they met, and uh, Mike looked a little different that night. He was determined, and he started to drive his car, and um, my mother said, where are we going? He said, I'm going to marry you tonight. We're going to elope. Oh. Yeah. Now, don't make those more. Don't make those sounds. <laughs> I'm on the edge here. Um, I'm um, and so um, my mother, who worried hysterical, she had her five older brothers and sister and a very dominant mother, dominant mother to answer to. No, Mike, no, just turn the car around. I said, no, we're gonna, I love you and you love me and we're going to marry. And um, my mother finally said, um, if you don't turn the car around, I'm going to jump. So now I have a mother who has learned to fly an airplane in 1937, and now she's about to jump from a moving vehicle. How cool a mother is that? <laughs> um, of course, I embellished that scene so that my mother was actually outside, and she was riding on the running board of a canary, a canary yellow, yellow Duesenberg with her arm locked in the window post in the wind blowing her hair, and her Isadora Duncan scarf flopping yeah. behind her. Right? And she's screaming over the sound of the engine, Mike, turn this car around or I'll jump. <laughs> and Mike was in the driver's seat with his leather aviation helmet was his father saying, Oh, girl, I love you. And we shall marry tonight. No, Mike, no, but um, my mother won. And Mike finally turned the car around and brought her home. And that was the end of that. Oh. In, um, that was in 19, that incident took place in about 1938. In um, my missile. in uh, 1993 or so, I visited my mother and uh, sister in the states, and uh, my sister said, "Tonight, uh, all of the kids, our grown children, will be out. So why don't we sit around and we tell, just talk, just the three of us?" Um, I should mention, if I can get this out, that uh, that was the, what was left of the nuclear family. Um, I said, great, so I whipped up a picture of margaritas and we sat around and we started talking. Of course, we talked about the olden days. But now the olden days, since the generation train had moved down the track quite a ways, my stories and my sister's childhood stories now qualify as olden day stories. And um, if I told you any of the stories, they wouldn't be interesting to you. They were our stories, they were our family stories, and you can imagine your own. But what was nice about it was that we were in sync. We were just, we were gliding over this valley, this familiar valley, and we knew all the landmarks and the, we knew the updrafts. We were, we were sort of wingtip to wingtip, and uh, we knew where the warm currents were and the cold currents, and when we would rise up and fall down. And we just had such a delicious time that evening. It was, it was wonderful, and it was so reminiscent of those old days when I was a kid. And so I just said, Mom, do you ever, um, you ever wonder what happened to Mike? And my mother, very matter-of-factly, said, uh, oh, and she gave me the 30-second bio. Oh, yeah, Mike, after the war, Mike started a, a cargo air freight company. He had about six airplanes. He um, did quite well for himself. He got married, had two sons, and now he lives in Westchester County. Uh, he's retired. My mother, at this point, was almost 80 years old. Um, I said, you know where Mike is? Said, That's that's amazing. She said, well, you know how it is. Uh, you have friends and you hear little tidbits about people and you know where people are and what they've done and so on. And then mommy dropped the mommy bomb. <laughs> you know the mommy bomb? This is the bomb that mothers drop on sons who think they know something about something or everything about everything, but really they know nothing about nothing. And uh, she said, oh, I should tell you, don't confuse this with daddy bombs. Daddy bombs are black, and they have a fuse, and, right? They like a tss, and they go, here you go, son. <laughs> daddy bombs, I don't, I, I, I go back there. They don't, 
the yeah. crib or they just do one of these. Hey son, <laughs> mommy bombs are mommy bombs are um, linen hankies. They're beige, cream color, and they have a beige uh, salmon um, embroidery around the edge, and they have an M for mom. And they drop them like this. <laughs> but when they hit, and my mother says, my mother says to me, she says, um, sometimes I call Mike. <laughs> now, in my world, in my experience, there is um, Abraham Lincoln, there are the Beatles, and there are Mike. And what they there is Mike, and what they have in common is that they cannot be reached. <laughs> I called them about six months ago. <laughs> You actually called him and spoke to him. What did you say? And then um, her eyes changed. And her voice changed. And, uh, so something funny. And uh, she went into that sing-song voice, and she said, um, "Oh, I didn't say anything." I never say anything. I just wanted to hear his voice. I said, did, did he say anything to you? And she said, yeah. He said, hello, no. <laughs> um, But I didn't say anything. I just pressed the phone to my ear and I listened and I listened carefully. And it was so nice knowing where he was and what he was doing and that he was on the other end of his phone. And there was a long silence. And after that, he said, Vera, is that you? 